But anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, what happens now? We have, we have a crisis. On, as it happened in many crises before, and there is a choice between, uh, between solidarity, which would be very, very important, or uh, well, what I call closure. I'm going to define it. It seems that although we are really in a supposedly in a globalization with open borders on uh, free travel, it seems that uh, society are closing, and there are many examples. We have seen before a picture of what happens in the US with walls that are, that are being, building up to stop, stop foreigners from coming. This is also the case of gated communities. This is the case of people dying at borders. Basically, the conditions are very hard. The only way for people to get resources is to move. On rich countries close their borders, which actually doesn't stop the flow, because, but, but increases really very much the situation, the despair of the people, population in the, in the, in the countries or, or on to, to pass borders. There's fear, fear of foreigners, vote for anti-immigrants. This has been described in Swiss and, and it's happening also in France and everywhere, it seems. There is xenophobia. Okay, so at, uh, at the, the Barcelona conference, in a, in a note on, there was a working group, a gap working group, like the, the, the same way that we're, there's a gap in this conference on, on demography and there was like a special note on immigration. And, and it was said that migration was not caused by overpopulation, but primarily by, by the inequalities. Um, and so the, yeah, on, on, on that the, the movement would oppose like a lifeboat ethics, which would, you know, take, uh, take this the, the generalized situation as a common pool of resources that would need to, where we would need to exclude people. Uh, and this is unacceptable. Uh, on, on, but, but then we would work on greater local resilience. And so I'm going to, to go more on this and try to go much deeper, actually. Um, the plan is the following. What is closure? Different approaches to borders. Degrowth on no borders. And I want to develop uh, what, what, what we have been talking actually within the degrowth movement for a long time. Uh, it's always been mentioned, the idea of open localism. So, what is closure? When I'm going to use the word closure, it's always in this, in this sense. Right? It's not, so it's, it's about drawing boundaries, making frontiers, constru constructing identities and building communities in order to monopolize scarce resources for one's own group, thereby excluding others from, from using them. So I want to say that I uh, yeah, focus on, on the closure for people and also not, not so much goods, although it is a bit sometimes linked. Going. So I want to say that very often, uh, first, you know, degrowth deals with limits and there is then a, a mix between done with, with the idea of limits and the idea of, of closure. I want to say that on the contrary, it has nothing to do, closure has nothing to do with with choosing to limit some excesses, because on the contrary, being able to continue with excesses is done by closing ourselves. So, closure is about close communities, non-negotiable identities. I'm not going to develop so much this. I mean, basically, is that you support your own community on uh, on, on on exclude on those that are not part of the community. And it's also about, about identities based, for example, on, uh, on some territory or some ethnic or some, very often it's a kind of, you know, sometimes it's, it's actually invented by the fact that you create these borders. This closure is, uh, is unjust. It's, uh, well, it's refusing the entry of, of less wealthy people, so it's a defense of the privilege. Uh, it doesn't 
let people with, a speci with some special paper to, to enter. So, I mean, it's discri discriminatory. It's against the liberty of, of movement and people are not free to travel. Uh, I would also defend that it's not democratic. I mean, there, there are countries that are wealthy, that advertise their, their way of life through media, through, for example, TV shows. And so this has an impact uh, on, 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 on then uh, it decides on a special policy which is about closing themselves, but only the ones that are within the borders can vote. Although the people that have the, the, the consequence of the policy of the countries are, are worldwide. So uh, there, is, there is a problem, fundamental problem there, democracy, I think. Also, it can, it's basically conservative. I mean, it's, it prevents social change and so on. So uh, this is this was one of the argument of the of the Swiss uh, the Swiss the fact that okay foreigners would uh, would uh, create uh, traffic jams and so this is like the typical thing you know people are in a traffic jam and thinking oh there are too many people everybody's thinking the same there are too many people and then um, I want to to say that okay this is for me the the, the congestion Google's is like. You see all the problems, most of the problem, as a problem of too many people. Yeah, problems are problems of congestion. Um, and basically, it's about excluding instead of changing. And so there would be another way, which would be to say, well, we don't, for example, we don't go by car or you know, something like that. But this would obviously uh, require another way of thinking. OK, special to very special to the, to the theme of closure is definitely the borders. So I'm, I just want to, to focus a little bit on this, on this problem. And there are different positions. There is like the right-wing position. This, we're going to see also, also a left-wing position. And we're going to see um, also extreme right, extreme right way of seeing things also. So the, the liberal right position, which is about open borders for growth. Uh, the, it's the idea that in this case, they want actually to open borders for good on people um, with the idea that actually people are, 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 commodi are actually commodities. Um, uh, it's, it <laughs> we say it is about open borders, but actually it's, it is about privatization. Right? Historically, it has come with, the, with coming actually from closed commons to actually closed properties with the enclosures. So uh, it's not really completely about opening. Um, and it's, it lends itself to increase exploitation and commodification of human beings. It's, it's about uh, different labor regimes. I mean, okay. In practice, it's, it's not so open. First, because people that don't have money actually can't travel so easily. Um, even for products, I, mean, I said I wouldn't mention products, but mainly products of multinationals can travel around. I mean, if you, if you make some jam at home, and you, you cannot sell it in Japan. So, I mean, <laughs> anyway, it's just a small example. But <laughs> Um, so, now the left, the more leftist <coughs> position, like a, it's about closing border this time for good mainly. It's not the preferred option, but it's a kind of defense against uh, globalization. Um, basically, the argument is. We need to close because this, this is what enabled rich countries to get health w wealthy before. And for example, the US or Japan closed, I mean, made a lot of product protectionism. Um, and and it, it has been good for their growth. And so the, you know, this is the idea that uh, the, no rich country would be wanting to, to kick away the ladder, ladder and forbid other people to 
become protectionism self and to become rich also. So it's, so it's like a, it's a growth argument for closing border. <coughs> There's also a green on social Keynesianism, which is very actual right now because there, there, is, a, there is this, uh, this uh, Atlantic, um, Atlant uh, uh, don't remember what you call it in English, like the, the transatlantic trade uh, 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 agreement. Huh? TTIP, that's going to be... The TIP, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, basically we're going to uh, change ecological standard, maybe on, on, on social standard in Europe, to, in order to, to fit to the, to the, to the trans... I mean, the fact that you, that you would op open border would, be, would be make it risky for, for the eco-social havens that we, that we generated. But, but then we, we come back to the Swiss situation, because it's also the argument of the, of the, of, of the Swiss people saying, OK, you know, the eco-pop, eco no? Uh, I mean, these good, good standards of living in, a, in a, a good ecology in, in Switzerland, and so we, we, we better close border. I don't know. Is anyway, I think we, the, the danger of the globalization is a, is, a, is a very important issue, but there is also a danger by focusing on the borders. Uh, because we, yeah, we, there is a danger basically of, of being recuperated by, by nationalist ideas. And especially the, the conservative right, when then it is about close border for people, not only for goods, with a fear of mass immigration, a fear that living conditions would, would equalize between rich and poor countries. There is like a conflation that is done between liberal and left, uh, on left open border discourse with the same, like it's all the same open, open border lobby. Um, this can lead us quickly to xenophobia, to ethnic separatism. I mean, saying that, okay, everybody, each, each ethnic, which is undefined, like is, we don't know if it's genetic or, or, uh, or if it is uh, cultural, uh, but everybody would have to live in its homogeneous little entity. Sometimes it's pure invention of identity, as I said. Now the, the really critical aspect is that in the critics to growth, there have been also uh, people taking discourse that are in a little, little in line in this, in, this, in this vision. And so we have to be very very serious about it, especially, I, I've heard the case like of uh, Switzerland, but uh, no, what happens in France and what happens in the US. Some prominent ecologists, for example, have been uh, in favor of closing borders, it's not really recent. I mean, there's, Herman Daly has been writing lots of articles about this, the fact that to, to close borders, that would, with this course, that, is the, that would be very, very similar to, to, to discourses of the extreme right in France. Except that there are prominent ecological economics, ecologists. Um, the idea is that we have to close borders into rich country to re reduce the ecological footprint. There is like Ries, who's inventor of the ecological footprint, that take these courses like this. Uh, Einberg, it's like really important, uh, imp imp important people. Also, adepts of communities around common pool resources uh, have stand against Im immigration. Like, I mean, like she is the case of Dali. On a, and there's then a Malthusian position also saying, OK, uh, we need to reduce population. And so, in a way, a way to reduce population is actually to close borders. It's a kind of color, color of, uh, of, the, of Malthus' position. And, and, and like Malthus, it is about not challenging our lifestyle. Um, among the, 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 the dangers that come is also local, well, the idea of local, this kind of local patriotism, which could become fashionable. Or and, and there's the, the problem of bioregionalism, which what not, right now is really cosmopolitan, but that could become a way to naturalize the, naturalize the idea of border, of frontier. So what I develop is that closure is. It is actually a necessary condition for growth. And actually, in, in, in a world with resource scarcity, 
uh, growth is only possible, growth or even maybe steady state in some, in some little citadel, in some small, for a minority. And so it's completely logical that, uh, that it, you want to close yourself. Um, closure keeps the, the frustration, and this frustration is very important to keep people consuming, you know, it's because you see your neighbor that has a bigger car, bigger house that makes you want to have more, you know, if not, we, we might lose motivation. Um, it also creates this vulnerability and security for, for uh, you know, cheap labor, basically, it's also important for economic growth. Uh, and it can also keep the concentration of power and finances in some place, you know. So, so basically, from this I want to say that I, I don't see it very wise to, to, take, uh, to take closure uh, as, a, as a proposal for degrowth. Um, except if you would take a kind of reductionist, that's what I'm going to take to come at. If you take a reductionist interpretation of, of degrowth, saying like, yeah, if you, you know, it's like a local degrowth that do doesn't take into account that actually it has an impact somewhere else and so on, that actually creating growth somewhere else and so on. Okay, so I'm going to, to actually define this more on the fact that come more into, into the degrowth case, like because we're in degrowth conference, and, and especially the, the, the original foundations, the, the sources, what we call the sources, the roots, the, the, on the fact that it's not a mono thinking, because it, it combines different concerns. It's not only con it combines different concerns, it's also, it, it also combines many proposals, strategy, actors, scales, concepts, visions, lots of things, basically. It's, it, it's, in my opinion, it's really a challenge of the, of the level of differentiation. So it's, it's really fundamental about all sorts of borders. It's about blurring all sorts of borders, actually. Um, anyway, all this, this, the fact that it's not a mono thinking, make it has, has made degrowth difficult to, to define because everybody starts from a different entry point. But the, 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 the point is that it's very important that to understand each other concern. Um, especially, there are different concerns to which the growth responds. On, I'm not going to go in detail, but basically, uh, there's the ecological concern. There is the fact that we want a convivial society. There is the the, the, the the problem that we we commodify everything. There is the problem that we, we we will lack resources. There is the meaning of life. There is uh, the, the democracy on on justice. On, on justice is as many aspects, there are many aspects to justice. Um, what happens is that if we don't combine well, it's pretty scary because if you think about the resources but don't think about meaning of life on, 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 on work only with indicators and so on, you could really create some kind of a, some, some well, very depressing life first and on, on, on also, um, well, could be used for control through indicators of people, I don't know. Ecology without justice could be about, well, human genocide. You kill people and uh, then you solve the ecological problem. Or if you go around justice without democracy, it could be about some top-down authoritarianism. Uh, on one aspect, and this is where we come to, to closure, that degrowth without justice could be about closure. You don't care about the other ones. But the point is that we need to combine. This is fundamental to, to degrowth, that's, to combine these things. And, and there is a double problem, is that first, very easily degrowth, because it's a disturbing idea, is attacked, saying that it's actually a mono thinking, saying, oh, you are only ecologist, or you are only this, or you know. So, but there's also the problem that some people that would, def would, would defend a reductionist idea of degrowth. And, and could 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 develop problematic ideas. So, so I, I don't know. Do I do the whole presentation or? Yeah, you could hurry up a bit and leave some for the okay. questions. But of, of course, you should you should do now, this now. I mean, yeah. this is now the proposal. So <laughs> right now it was more the analysis, and now is the, the the proposal because this should be given more importance. The open localism. Well, this I could leave out maybe the fact that. The cosmopolitanism has, is an important idea of degrowth. 
on localism also, so both. Um, it's part of the eight air of Latouche, you know, like the, the basic uh, proposal. So on four open borders proponents, localism can be can 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 be seen as closure. So I want to defend that it's about reducing the distance between producers and cons consumers, but not about closure. Yeah, a local degrowth that involves a growth elsewhere on your future is no degrowth. But but then I want to go further on this. On, on really be clear about this proposal of open localism. So if if I it's about reversing the, the definition of closure that we had before. So it's it's a process of transcending frontiers, building then open communities in, instead of closed communities actually. To avoid the mono, monopolization of scarce resources for one's own group and avoiding excluding others. Um, there's a further definition what that actually deals with much other aspects than, than just this. It's, it's about avoiding exclusion of concerns, scales, perspective, way of acting, and so on. So, it's in line with localism, that it's, it's, about, it's, it's about favoring what we can directly see and feel. But it's, and it's about a local that, that, doesn't, that wouldn't develop fixed borders. Yeah, on act local, think global, like, which is attributed to Elul. Um, instead of uh, a localism that would function with closing yourself, it's, it's about fighting large scale on, on fast transport infrastructure. So it's about, it's the difference between, between borders and limits. It's actually, we, we want to, to, to deal with limits, so we need limits, but limits don't come through, through borders, they come because because we don't create this enormous, uh, on, on, on we fight against this enormous large-scale fast transport infrastructure. On, in, on the contrary, it's about flee on slow travel so that people can also invest. Anyway, invest where we go and take the time to understand, to see things. And it's about hospitality also. It's an important fundamental value of, of co cosmopolitanism also on the growth. So this is a Tempelhof, so an example of, a, you know, the per perfect, you know, it's like an airport that becomes a convivial place, hopefully even more. So the fact that in the individual can be part of several communities, and that these communities can be, can be open on, on, on their limit being blurred, and that it's about community of project, not community of identity, especially closed identity. But people are ready for collective constructions that design their institutions so that different approaches become compatible. I'm going to go more on this. Um, instead of, uh, yeah, there is a, a problem with hegemonic universality, some, some kind of, you know, this is, you know, the US that sends the troops to defend human rights, for example, or this is hegemonic universality. And here the idea is to, is diversal. This, this, this concept comes from the Caribs, where there is this uh, mix of, uh, lots of mix of population, good thinking there on, uh, on these aspects. And the fact that it would be universalism, but that comes from the bottom, uh, with, uh, with a, a dialog dialoguing, dialogic uh, universalism. This is in line with the, the idea of self-institution of Castoriadis, this idea that actually we have to define our own institutions, but that, that involves transcend, transcendence of, 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 of actually closure, so that different visions are incorporated. It's about dialogic rationality, that means not false consensus, that is that something that would be decided beforehand, but that, that would be the result of a constructive dialogue. And um, 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 this is, I don't know if you, if you know of uh, Deleuze on um, this idea of rhizome and the, the idea of identity that would, not, that would come from the relation, actually, defined with the relation, on identity based on dialogue and, and so on. I'm going a bit fast. Uh, so, so he, he would qu question the present identity based on consum consum consumption markers, which is like for which like the, the open border liberals love very much this type of identity where people say, oh, I, I am my car and so on. 
Um, it's opposed to the way our life is not negotiable, but also question the identity uh, related to the exclusion of others, which comes with this with these national borders. Also, be regional. Also, and, and then it the growth then involves a change of what people use to identify identify themselves. Huh? So, it's about actually crossing crossing frontiers. Uh, so that we can actually uh, metamorphose, change. <laughs> because it's, it's change of identity, it's, it's about this. And, and, and that means that we, we question the structure leading to antagonism, the fact that, that we necessarily have to, to compete. Um, and you know this game of the, the musical, mu musical chair. You know, it's like there's, a, there's always less chair than the number of people. On, on, and yeah, for sure, if you want to solve this problem, you, you have to exclude someone. Um, the idea is, no, institute so that we, we, don't, we don't have this problem anymore. So for, for example, we could be several people on one chair, or I don't know, this could be discussed in the, in the self-institution process. Okay, so now about the, the, the no border, we have to be clear that it's not it's not a single, like any degrowth proposals, it cannot be isolated because it comes through, it, it, it's, a, it's a change of, it's a change of system, uh, it's a change of, uh, how to say it, I don't know to say, but it, it cannot be one proposal that solves the whole thing, obviously. It comes through many, many proposals at different scales and it's a complementing proposals among many degrowth proposals. And it has to come along a strong reduction of inequality so that we don't promote consumers' lifestyle and don't support the frustration, obviously. And it's, it's about discovering new ways to fulfill the needs of, I don't know if you know about uh, Max Sniff, on, on the needs defined by Max Sniff. That's, that's what it's about. And so, in practice, I, uh, I want to link just to finish, I still have uh, two minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> no, but I mean, I want to link to the to the story of the commons because we started actually because it's not about closed commons and it's not about going back to privatized individuals. It's about um, it's about other type of commons where 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 we incorporate degrowth so that we enable the commoning, actually, the, 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 the easy management of commons, more, more easy at least, than if there is big scarcity, uh, that it includes the type of mobility on the idea that we involve in communities of projects that enable the understanding of development of, of local knowledge, that the fact that commons are not only about, it's not a choice between I don't know, do we have to work at the individual uh, group or regional or global level? No, it's not, it's not a choice like this. It's about actually, uh, we, we're not related to any of those, but to, we have, need a dialogue between these, these scales. Um, it doesn't forbid, uh, you know, some people are more commoners than others. So it, it needs to leave also the possibility of, uh, of the free electrons that consume very little while keeping dialogue. And it would involve then sensibility. So, so just to sum up a little bit, open localism would involve like the sensibility to the local, the multi-scale, declosure, and we don't close at a given scale. It's about open communities of projects. It's about deep involvement on frugal and slow travel. It's about negotiable relational identity. It's about the, the autonomy of Castoriadis transcending closure. And it's not about a single proposal bullet, it's not a silver bullet, but deals with interlimits to growth. And it's about then this dialogic consensus process between, between the key degrowth concerns, which ends up saying that closure is not possible actually, it's about between the multiple scales, so we, we don't close at a, at a given scale. But it's also about, about 
dialogue between the ways of acting. Uh, it's not a, uh, it's not about you know, it's not about anti intellectualism or 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 research without practice. Or no, it's about dialogue between these on, on actually combination. It's about complementary strategies, opposition, alternative, revolutionary formism. That is that is like that we 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 also change institutions from the inside, but in order to, so that they can transform. And it's about the degrowth, like a combination of the degrowth proposals through the different dimensions, dealing with time, f physical flows, infrastructures, uh, institutions, which includes the monetary, the, the challenging the, dealing with the social comparisons, the needs, the imaginaries. This idea, I mean, this interlimitation, that would be a voluntary, voluntary thing. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>